praise. Praise. Let, let everything that has got breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, we come because we know God deserves our praise. Yes. God deserves our worship. Hallelujah. Yes. And sometimes we come to church because we are looking for an answer. We have so many questions that we have. And we come to church because we are looking for an answer. Sometimes we come to church, you know, because your mother or your father, they've dragged you to come to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning, we are coming to the house of the Lord with different needs. Hallelujah. So I don't know what you want from the Lord this morning. I don't know what you want to tell the Lord. There's somebody here who wants to say to the Lord, Lord, I thank you because you preserved my life. That somebody is saying, Lord, I thank you because you have saved my soul. I will be in prison if you do not save me. I will be dead by this time. But I'm here to say, God, I thank you. Yes. So I don't know where you are coming from. I don't know what are your needs. I don't know what are your struggles. But I know there is God in heaven who is able to restore your life. Amen. Who is able to bring healing to you. Amen. And I believe that this morning you will not leave this place the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your hands to the Lord and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus.
your deliverance. the angels of God in this place. Disperse the angels of God. Take a step. Maria Kalaba. Thank you, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have greeted you. Hallelujah. I think I need to go straight to the word of God. And I also want to acknowledge my mother-in-law, Maho Muruti, Maho the prophet. Ma Why am I calling you prophet today? Hallelujah. Maho Apostle, uh, let us celebrate her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She's one of those that support the sun. I think for most of you, you know, many of the celebrations, she has to be there and she's always there and she tried to be there. Therefore, we want to say we celebrate you, Mama, and we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I like it in here that way. Just keep it there. I love it. I love it. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to share a message that says there is no shame in Christ. Hallelujah. Last week I was sharing on my book that I'm writing, which says A Hospitable Woman. And then I was talking about the five types of hosts. I'm going to share from the other book that I'm writing. I have been writing it for so many years. So I think it's the time for me at least to preach it. The title of the book says, uh, Rejected and Not Forgotten rejected and not forgotten that is the title of the book there is a chapter in there that talks about shame you read the book you will enjoy what is there let's go to psalms 25 verse 2 romans 10 11 Psalms 31 verse 17. Let's start with Psalms 25 verse 2. There is no shame in Christ. Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Romans 10 11 says also, please put it there. There is no shame in Christ. I want you, when you are leaving this place, if you cannot remember the scriptures, remember the saying that there is no shame. Can I see? For the scripture, Romans 10, 11 says, For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Psalm 31 verse 17. Do 
not let me be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be silent in the grave. Do not let me be ashamed, O Lord. Maybe you are here this morning and it is your prayer and you are saying, Lord, help me not to be ashamed. I have been ashamed for a very long time. Hallelujah. The meaning of shame, it is a personal feeling that comes with regret, humiliation, and dishonor. Shame is something that you go through and nobody knows. You put up on your makeup, you wear your stilettos, you put up on your mask, and you go through shame. And nobody knows what you are going through. I want to say to you, this morning the Lord is going to heal you and the Lord is going to deliver you. If you can say amen, you help me to preach better. Because I want to hear that I'm talking to people who also hear me. You are here this morning and you are saying, I am suffering from shame. I have been ashamed. Shame, shame. You know, when I was preparing this message, I felt in my spirit that there is an outburst of shame. Shame is an emotional feeling. Shame is beyond guilty. You are ashamed. When you look at yourself, you think everybody knows what you have gone through. Most of the time, shame comes from your past. It comes from the things that happened to you long ago. Can I have this shifting so that I'm stationary? You, go, you have gone through a lot of shame in your life. Failure brings shame. You fail in life. You once failed in life. You were once disappointed in life. And you went through shame and nobody knows about that. You are living your life in shame. You are not progressing in your Christian walk because of shame. Shame is a stronghold. Shame imprisons you. Nobody knows but you are imprisoned because of that which happened to you. You went through an embarrassment. Maybe it was 10 years ago. And you feel ashamed. You are ashamed. You are prisoned with shame. Sin can cause you to be ashamed. The Bible says in Genesis 3.10, Adam said, I heard the sound and I hid myself. Because of sin. Because they were ashamed. Sin can cause you to be ashamed. Help me Jesus. Help me Lord. Sometimes. Or some things happens in your family. And they cause shame. Some of those things, they happen when you are young. And you live all your life to explain. Because you are going through shame. Sometimes nobody understands you. 
support sometimes people were not there you go through shame shame affects you internally and destroys you nobody knows like i'm saying but inside you have you, you have all the knowledge of the things that has happened to you and you are ashamed childhood abuse trauma physical and emotional abuse you go through a lot of things childhood abuse you know when i was preparing this message i was just thinking that a girl who was raped from that painful incident in her life she has to go to the police and report herself she is ashamed she has to tell the people about her story sometimes it's been the family members those who love her and those who hate her they need to they end up knowing her story and she there is nobody to tell and say i am ashamed and you are imprisoned you live your life and you are imprisoned you have a child outside a wedlock you have a child even when you are still born again and that thing shames you you smile but you are ashamed you are struggling in the inside some people some of us you find yourself in lots of deaths and you can't even show what you have done with the money all these years you are ashamed you are ashamed you hold money you get money but you can't show what you are doing with your money and that thing shames you you are ashamed you are broken in the inside your peers are succeeding and your life is stagnant your peers they are making it but your life is moving around the circles you are ashamed and you know the word of god you have read the bible Romans 8 verse 1 says there there is no there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ you have heard the word of God you have received the word of God but you are struggling from shame something happens or something is happening something that is not even your fault or something that is your fault you are, can't break you know forth you can't you can't come out you are bound by shame you know the bible says in romans 10 11 says whosoever believe in him will not be put to shame you know the scriptures your church is a Bible reading church. You know, you know. Isaiah 43, 18 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. You know the Bible, you know the scripture, but you are struggling with shame. Once in a while, you remember those things that happened to you shame is personal shame is something that you can't even explain you are ashamed in your family there are things that makes you to be ashamed you don't want even to talk about them the things that your husband did you are ashamed 
How your in-laws treated you. You are ashamed. You can't even tell anybody. There is a story in the Bible that I like. You, the story about Anna. The prophetess Anna, you know, she was excited that she's getting married. But the husband, after seven years, the husband died. I love that story because it teaches me that, you know, I need to put my trust in God. Not in a man, not in a job, not in a career, not on the things that I have. I need to put my trust in the Lord. For Anna, she lived 84 years. And she made a wise decision to stay in the house of the Lord. The best thing that we can do it is to rejoice in the Lord, to stay in the presence of the Lord because in his presence there is fullness of joy. Prophetess Anna, she was just like me and you. Happily married but something happened. What am I saying? Shame, embarrassment, failure. Some of us, we never saw ourselves failing. Even in school. Even that course that you are doing. But you, you fail and you are ashamed. And you are living, your life is moving around the circles. Like I'm saying, I... I, I like I'm saying, like uh, I, 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 I wrote that chapter, the chapter that talks about shame, that there is no shame in Christ because the title of the book talks about rejection. When you are rejected for a very long time, when people reject you, when the world rejects you or the system can reject you and you go through shame masala you know how do you know that you are going through shame you are struggling with shame it was one day when i was praying and i was in the presence of the lord myself you know when when I was praying and I realized that sometimes we will never know what God wants us to do we will never know to, how to be healed from the things that you have gone through it was in that time of prayer intimacy with the Lord when I told the Lord that, Lord, I am moving around circles. I'm moving around circles. And you know, I'm that particular person, if you know. I don't like preaching. But it was not so from the beginning. Those who came to this church, they know how passionate I was when it comes to preaching. Especially when you are talking about a girl child. They know how much, you know, I love, you know, a woman that fears the Lord. How much I love, you know, a mother, a mother, mothers that we can go to and ask them, pray for me. How I, I believe in a woman. How I believe that a woman can build a community. How I believe that women are builders. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 verse 1 that a woman, she's a builder. When I was in the presence of the Lord and I was praying and I was talking to the Lord and said, God, what made me not to love this thing of sharing and encouraging other women? And the Lord revealed to me and said, you are going through shame. You are going through shame. As a young girl, got married to my husband, I love preaching, especially, I told my husband, can I specialize on women? 
do I have the women who knows who were here from the beginning? Do I have them? Can I get it? Do I have them? I want to hear your amen if you're here from the beginning. I bought a book called Every Woman in the Bible. Because I was so passionate about a girl child. I was so passionate about women. I can talk about women, you know, I can talk about all these women from different angles. That's who I was and that's who I am. And the Lord, when I was still praying and the Lord told me that you are going through shame. And then I broke before the Lord. I cried to God. I cried to God. And the Lord told me that I'm not only healing you, but I'm going to heal the church. I'm going to heal the church from the spirit of shame. I'm going to heal the church, men and women who are struggling with shame. Because I've shown you the secret. When you are in the presence of the Lord, when you are crying to God and saying, Lord, I can't break through. What is wrong with me? The Lord said, there is that thing. There is that wound that is closed up. It needs to open up. I cried to God. I remember I cried to God. I remember I cried to the Lord. You know why I suffered shame? Is because as a young girl, as a young pastor at the age of 25 years, in this church, in this place, people started to talk about Mamurut. People started to talk about the pastor. People started to talk about me and say, Mamurutu Obahali, Mamurutu Urile, Mamurutu Urile. And they spoke about me and it crippled me. It crippled my spirit because there is a scripture that I like which says, Blessed are the pure in hearts, for they shall see the Lord. As I minister, I must minister from the point of purity. I got crippled because I was ashamed. Because I loved women. I loved mothers. I believe that women are great people. And I believe that women can arise and help their husband in the ministry and anywhere. I believed. But because they spoke about me. And this happened this year. When I said, Lord, I'm saying yes to your call. Show me the secret. Why there is so much fear in me. Embarrassment can cause you to be ashamed. Things that are said by people, they can cripple your spirit. Things that are said in your family, they can cripple you. You know what the word of God says. Arise and shine. In your spirit you want to arise. But in your, the back of your mind. You can remember what they said about you. And it cripples you. You are trying to laugh. You are trying to be a saint. To be a Christian. But in the depth of your heart. You know. You know. That you are suffering from shame. And the Lord revealed to me. And I believe that when you are here, when you leave this place, ask the Lord, why is my life like this? Why am I not progressing? Why am I not becoming what God has called me to be? Why am I not moving forward? As the Lord, that Lord, have I been ashamed in my life? Certain things, they happen in our lives. Certain things, they happen in our families. And nobody knows. But you are in the presence of the Lord. But you are struggling from shame. And the Lord promised me that 
as I have revealed it to you. When I wrote the book, you know, I didn't even think about this, but I was so worried. I was so worried. I said, Lord, what happened to me? What, what happened to me? You need that in your life where you come to the Lord and say, Lord, talk to me. Reveal yourself to me. I cannot be a Christian for five years, for ten years, and my life is in circles. For me, the Lord revealed it to me. That I'm setting you free. It's because you are once ashamed. It's because the church that you are trying to preach to, they spoke about you. And sometimes when they speak, you hear. You pretend, but you hear. You know it. You see it. And it cripples your spirit. What have they said about you? What happened to you during your childhood? That you are still holding on it. Sometimes we put on our makeup, our behavior. You can tell this person is hiding something. You can tell our actions because deep down in your heart, you know. You know, you know. You can't explain it, but you know. The way you present yourself, you know deep down. Some of us, we hide behind our careers. Some of us, we hide behind a lot of explanation. This happened, that happened, this happened, that happened, this happened, but you know. Shame. Failure will bring you to a place of shame. You fail once, you become ashamed. And you know many times why we feel so ashamed is because we put our trust on that thing. You know, if you are telling yourself, you know, I have the best job ever and you lose the job, the best husband ever, you lose the husband. The best this, the best that. You think you have got money. You stay in the best place of the town, of this town. And you lose your job. You find yourself in debt. You struggle because you put your trust in those things. Makatelebo satalaba. Heal us, O oh God, from childhood abuse, trauma, Lord. Heal us, O oh King of glory. Let's go to First Samuel chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
a mother. You are excited. You are having your children. And you think all your children, they are going to do well. Believe me, we are the best mothers. I know they are bad mothers, but every mother begins to be a, bad, a good mother. They have their best interest for their children. But your children, they disappoint you. They fail at school. And they become nothing. According to you. You had a desire. Sometimes, you know, as parents, you are intelligent. Guru Obotali. And you think that your ch is going to be so with your children. And you are there and you are embarrassed. You are embarrassed because you had a dream. We all have dreams. We want beautiful things. We want to be successful. We want to progress in our life. We want to say when we say the Lord is so good and indeed he is good. But you look around your life, there is nothing good. And you are embarrassed. And you suffer from shame. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. this scripture 1 Samuel 1 1 to 10 we know the story of Hannah and the other lady called Penina we know the cry of Hannah but Hannah was loved but she had a cry and she has a need one thing about life is that my cry is not your cry. My knees are not your knees. But Hannah had a cry in her heart. She was in a place of barrenness. Unfruitfulness. Sometimes we need to be in a place of barrenness. That we will know how to cry to the Lord. We know how to ask from the Lord. We know how to inquire from the Lord. We need to be in a place of pain, a place of rejection. And in that place, we need to know who we are in Christ. No matter what we are going through, we need to know that even if there is barrenness, in God there is fruitfulness. In God there is fruitfulness. In God there are fruits. In God there is prosperity. In God there is healing. She was in a place of barrenness. Penina pushed her to a place where she has to seek the Lord. She pushed her. Sometimes we are too comfortable. Sometimes we are too comfortable. You need a banana in your life. Who will push you a little bit? Yeah, banana is not that she was more loved than I, but you need a banana. Who will push you a little bit? Remind us of what I say. A place of being in death 
that you know how to budget a place of scarcity a place of nothing that you know how to believe to the Lord a place where there is nothing and sometimes you ask yourself indeed if there is nothing there is no job there are no savings there is literally nothing where are you going sometimes you need to be in that place where you need to realign yourself rearrange yourself rearrange your thoughts and know that this life is not mine this belongs to God he is my provider he is Jehovah who sees and provides he is God and he never fails us I want to say to you this morning that keep praying Hannah for that boy keep praying for that thing that you need in your life keep believing God keep praying Sarah for the promised child keep believing God for what God has told you God can tell you that this is what I'm going to do with your life and it doesn't look like you're going anywhere keep believing it will come to pass I want to say to you go an extra mile Rebecca give the camels water your husband is on the way your husband is your way provision is on the way provision is on the way keep believing God keep trusting God keep dreaming Joseph though your brothers they hated you they hated the dream though Potiphar's wife lied about you keep dreaming go to the palace go to that place a place where you are and you did not choose it a place you know there are people who say uh, who blame their parents for, the, for, 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 for where they are now they blame their parents for everything but as for Joseph even when he went to the palace he continued to work he continued to, be succe to succeed and he continued to be successful until he was the prime minister hallelujah Amen. I want to say to you keep believing God yes. keep praying for the child for that boy keep praying for Hannah until Samuel come keep praying and know that God with God nothing is impossible keep believing in God he never changes he never sleeps no slumber because he is God and God sees you God sees your pain God sees your shame God sees you and he knows you by name hallelujah let God arise and his enemies cut down there is another man in, in the Bible that is Judges 11 verse 1 Kiru mesin Chapter 11 verse 1 says Now Jephthah Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty, a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begot Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall have no inheritance in our father's house for you are the son 
of another woman. They drove him away, his brothers. He belonged to that family. He belonged to that house. But they decided to tell him that you must leave our father's house. You have no inheritance in this house because you are a son of a harlot. You are not part of us. You are not one of us. Many of us will go through that in life. We are being rejected daily because we are not part of them. My mother and my father. He is not your mother. He is not your father. And they had the guts to drove him away. Sometimes you need to be driven away from that place of discomfort, of comfort. You need to be driven away. You are at work and it's not comfortable. Maybe God is saying, leave this place and go and start a business. Your business. I want to partner with you. They drove him away, his brothers. There is a message I once preached. We talk about household enemies. And I say all this start from your, your, your family, from your household. A lot of pain and a lot of shame doesn't come from anywhere. It comes from your household. These were the brothers of Jephthah. They drove him away because he was a son of a harlot. How many were there when you were born? In other words, is it my problem that I was born? Don't you know that I suffer from rejection? Don't you know that I'm ashamed? Because you describe my mother as a harlot. But the brothers, they were not merciful. They drove him away. Hallelujah. And it says, Kidu Metsim. Verse 3 says, Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob. And worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out raiding with him. It came to pass after a time that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so when the people of Ammon made war against Israel that the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Then they said to Jephthah, Come and be our commander that we may fight against the people of Ammon. When you are in a place, a place of pain, a place of rejection, a place of failure, sometimes you need to move from that place. As they drove him away, but there were people who were looking for him to become their leader. They said, come and be our leader. Sometimes you live in sorrow, but there are people who love you. You stay in a place where you are not accepted, where you are not celebrated. But there are people who are celebrating you, who are celebrating your success, who are celebrating your gifts, who are celebrating who you are. And they love you for who you are. Yes, he was a, a son of a harlot. They drove him away. We all know the story of Joseph. That his own brothers, they spoke about him. They sold him. Not strangers, but his brothers. And sometimes 
when we look at the book of Judges, you will never know that you can lead. You will never know that you can be a leader. You will never know that you can be Kurugana Bosokana. People can acknowledge what you have until you are driven away. Until you leave that place. Joseph was ashamed. When Potiphar's wife lied about him. You know, I've heard stories that, you know, there are many people who are in prison for the things that they've not done. More especially in America. I've heard and I also thought about it because I am afraid of the the ministry of prison. I'm so afraid because I, I don't like prison, you know. When you ask me what is it that you you are afraid of or you don't uh, you 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 can't stand I cannot stand prison because I think about those people who are closed in I think how they are living how they are doing their things how are they are surviving I'm told sometimes in the prison they leave you they close you know um, those cell I once saw another movie, I don't know if it was a movie or if it was the news, when we were talking about, the, when they were talking about Saddam Hussein, and I was thinking, they dig holes and they made them prison. So I'm afraid of prison. The other second thing that I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of, um, uh, I'm afraid of the, the mind. I'm afraid of the mind. You know, I, can, I can't imagine myself going down the mind. I can't. Because if for me it's prison, you know, you don't know what's going to happen and how it will happen. I'm afraid of those things. Joseph survived. He's in a prison. He did not commit a sin. But he is in a prison. To my girls, you are having a child and it was not your fault. Something happened and it happened and it happened and you now have a child. And you are in prison. You are in prison. Because it was not your choice. Some of you, you'll be left with your uncle. You'll be left with your cousin. They do something. They touch you in a way that you don't like it and you don't appreciate. And today you are in prison. You are in prison. You are hating you are ashamed but it was not your choice and nobody understand sometimes we do understand but you have to explain and every time you're explaining it reminds you of the action it reminds you of the humiliation it reminds you of the pain and the disappointment Joseph was in that place today i want to say to you those who have looked down upon you those who have mocked you those who spoke hateful ways against you from today there will be your great supporters from today there will be your great supporters they will celebrate you because the Lord is setting you free from that spirit of shame the Lord is delivering you from that spirit of shame you are old but you are ashamed you are old but you are ashamed shame you cannot explain it 
is an, a, a strong emotion strong feeling that you feel you have no confidence you lost your confidence because you are ashamed and you are ashamed one of the things that I lost in this process was the process of confidence I lost my confidence and sometimes when you lose your confidence you don't care you don't when a young girl becomes pregnant it's okay with me because when I spoke they shamed me so I just look and I move on I have a life to live but is it what God has called you to do in this season is it what God has called you to do precious is it what God has called you to do in this ministry because God calls us for different uh, ministries and my ministry it is to encourage a young girl it is to encourage mothers, widows it is to encourage that woman that is broken when you go through shame you lose confidence Muriti was preaching the other day and he said when you don't have money your, your words or your voice they don't matter you sit in the meetings you can't say anything because you don't have money and you are ashamed and you ask, they ask you where is your God and money is not everything by the way those who look down on you those who mocked you those who thought your family will never be anything those who thought you know sometimes we can think that wow when it comes to my family we have got everything where it can where we come from we have everything but something will happen that will shame you and you will not enjoy your life because when you try to be excited that thing came and it shamed you and you live in bondage so I want to say to you restoration has come restoration has come healing has come fight for what belongs to you hallelujah don't give up don't give up in this battle the Lord came that he takes away our shame Psalms 31 verse 1 says in you O Lord do I put my trust let me never be ashamed deliver me in your righteousness Jeremiah 30 17 says for I will restore health to you and your wounds I will heal declares the Lord because they have called you an outcast it is Zion from whom no one cares they have called you an outcast they have, told, they have called you a failure and sometimes you ask yourself how am I going to make this thing how am I going to make it how am I going to achieve this thing they said you are an outcast you are a failure you are nothing the Bible says for I will restore health to you and your wounds I will heal God is committed to heal your wounds God is committed to heal your wounds God is committed to touch your past and to heal you and to bring you to a place of satisfactory a place of abundance Isaiah 61 7 says for your shame I'll give you double for your shame I will give you double maybe you are sitting here and say you know what I've never been ashamed but you need to pray and say Lord help me not to be ashamed if I've been shamed the Lord says for your shame I will give you double restoration 
has come. Amen. Isaiah 60, 22 says, When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Don't give up on God. I, the Lord, will make it happen. Psalms 27 verse 4. verse 4 say, David says one thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. He shall hide me. God promises us that he will hide us. David said there is that one thing that I desire. A strong desire it is to stay in the house of the Lord. That I may inquire from the word of God. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together. May we stand on our feet. Lebeke telebo satalaba. I want you to pray for a second. Sia la bande de bosalala. Rebeke telebo kolianda la bashila. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our oh God. Thank you, Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Raise your voice to the Lord and say, Father, thank you for healing me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for ministering to me. Masalaba katele bo shalala la basata lebe ketele lele bo satala. Father, we thank you. Father, we give all the
celebrate. Thank you, Jesus. very strong in my spirit there's somebody here who the Lord is talking to and the reason why the preacher will not sit down is because he carries oil that was drawn from the prayer closet in her time of healing and the preacher must pour that oil in the wounds of those that are broken if you are here, your life is full of shame. Tabraka Samaya. Something is going to break today. You are here, you are saying, Pastor, if God doesn't help me, I've lost hope in my life. I hear your cry. The Lord is hearing your cry. I want you to come same song, same melody, same atmosphere. There is a powerful anointing here to heal and to set free. Just come. Come. You are there. You know yourself. This call is not for everybody. But you know this is your word. Yes, please. Let's keep that sustained. Yes, Lord. When you get here, lift your hands. Don't wait for anybody. Connect to God. Yes, Lord. Lift your hands. Yes. 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 Lift your hands to God. Oh, Jesus. 
as well. You are being healed. You are being healed. You are being healed by the power of God. He will take the pain away. The Lord is restoring you. I introduce you to a new season. I introduce you to a new season. A new season. A new dispensation. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God.
you restoration. I bring you healing. For the time of refreshing comes from the presence of God. Open your hearts. Ah. Open your hearts. There is a power coming upon you. Open your hearts.
Yeah. Oh.